joining me is your new Texas State champion. It is none other than Anthony Barella securing his second win of the season in spectacular fashion. AB, first off, just any initial thoughts? And of course, congratulations to you as well. Thank you. And yeah, it was just a crazy day of disc golf. Very stressful. And I can only imagine uh, just watching it, I was standing up quite a lot. So I can only imagine it was like playing. Uh, but if you don't mind, I like to rewind a little bit before we talk about today's proceedings and just kind of talk about, you know, the, the fact that you had such a stellar 2023 season, you know, lots of podium finishes, lots of top tens, but just not quite the win that you desire. But you didn't waste any time getting a win right away to kick off the season at the Chess.com Invitational. What do you think finally brought you that win? Was it some of the work you did in the off season? Was it something else, you know, just kind of give me your, your take on how you're able to, you know, kind of set things by storm right off the bat this season. Yeah. Um, I'm not really sure what came out about it. It's just, I put so much work in this off season more than I ever have. And just, I felt like, I don't know, I just needed to pull it off somehow. And that went at chess.com just pet, just vaulted me to a confidence I've never had before in my life. Yeah, so kind of the two follow-ups I have to that is, first off, was there anything in particular you worked really hard on this off season, or was it more of just kind of sharpening all of your tools uh, heading into the opening tournament? Uh, mostly my putting. I would try to get a couple hundred putts in a day, and then just working on my body and trying to go to the gym a lot and stuff like that. Gotcha. So you mentioned that you felt this newfound confidence after you won the chess.com invitational. And I think a lot of people wonder sometimes when someone gets their first win, is that going to kind of open the floodgates to allow them to, you know, express themselves fully and be able to have more and more wins just kind of stacking up. Is that the kind of vibe you had when you left uh, the Olympus course that week? Um, I just knew finally I could do it. And it was, I just have that block in my head my entire career playing on the Elite Series that what if I can't win these things? And once I finally did it, it's just like a flip switch to my head. And now I feel like I could win every single tournament I play in. Well, let's talk about the one that you just won. And I want to start with talking about the opening two rounds. Of course, you shot the hot round of the day to kick off the tournament. Then, of course, you shoot the 16 under par yesterday to take the course record. What do you feel allowed you to shoot so well at this course? Was it just it suited your game? Was it just something kind of that you were feeling as you were heading into the weekend? Kind of just tell me about those those opening two rounds and how they felt to you. Yeah, I knew I have good, good memories here. I got second place last year. I played pretty well. And I, I just think this course is super fun to play, like all the shot shapes and how you can throw it. There's like a few holes where you can really pound on the disc and just fully commit. And I don't know, it's just a fun course to play. And I feel like I have like those soft putter turnovers with my Luna is just my favorite shot to throw. And there's a few out there. So just all around a great course for me. And I just have a blast out here. And the Houston fans are super rowdy and loud. So it's just all around very fun to play this course. Indeed. And you entered the course with a six stroke lead uh, going into this final round. Did you have any particular kind of game plan in mind having that type of lead? Or was your idea, you know, right away just to kind of keep pounding at it as much as you could? Yeah, I was just going to try to stay true to my game plan because I knew anyone could get hot at this course at any time. Like all these guys I'm playing with, they throw far enough, they can hit the putts. And Gannon showed it today that it can happen. And it was just super stressful with Ezra putting that pressure on me and then in the beginning and then Gannon putting all that pressure on me. But yeah. Yeah, speaking of which, just to kind of highlight that a little bit more, uh, after the first 10 holes, Edder was able to cut the lead in half down to three strokes. Uh, you kind of mentioned him there a little bit. As you Were you aware of that as you headed into the back nine? And was there anything that was kind of uh, maybe adjusting with your game plan or thought process as you headed into the back half of the course? Um, yeah, I definitely knew I had to start birding. I felt like I was playing bad, but I was still 600 through nine. And it was just... There's so much pressure on me with Ezra birding every hole. I was like, this dude's about to shoot 17 under. I have to shoot at least a 12 to win this tournament. And yeah, I tried to stop thinking about that halfway through the round and just play my own game. And then down the stretch, I just knew I had to make my putts. Yeah, obviously holes 11 through 14 were quite turbulent, to say the least. And by the end of it, all of a sudden, not only was Ezra just two strokes behind you, but now, you know, Gannon Burr, who was originally eight strokes off the lead when the you know final day started, was now also within two strokes uh, as you went to the final three holes. How did you navigate that situation? Because I, I feel like that is a 
point in, in someone's round where you can either crack or you can clutch. Uh, what do you think allowed you to be able to, you know, hit those putts on 16 and 17 and kind of put away the, you know, the threat that was coming after you? Yeah, I mean, I've never really been in a situation like that where I had to make two clutch putts in a row to take down a, a tournament. And it was just like I've made these putts millions of times before and I just had to commit and take deep breaths. So I was huge. Those final holes was just keeping my composure and just keeping my breaths deep and my confidence up, telling myself I could do it and telling myself I can make these putts. So you've quickly grabbed two wins this season, as well as a couple of other top five finishes and look like the hottest player out of the gate for the 2024 season. Do you feel like this is your year to shine? Um, I really hope so. I feel like I feel more confident than ever before in my putting and my throwing. And I just need to stay consistent. That's the biggest part for me this year is just trying to fight through those bad rounds because that's what's bit me in the past is just falling short on like a first round and just like giving up in a tournament and just now I have a different mindset to where if I am playing bad, I can just flip a switch in my head and completely swap it around. It's like, I don't know where it came from, but it's here now. Well, I'm glad that you found it, and uh, we look forward to seeing much more from you throughout the course of the season. But I kind of wanted to take this final moment just to give you the floor, allow yourself to give any shout-outs to friends, family, sponsors, or just any final thoughts that you have before we let you go. Yeah, obviously my parents, my family, my girlfriend, friends back home, they're just so supportive of me. They're motivating me all through the week. My buddy Cupcake for caddying for me. And then just the people I was staying with this week were all some of my closest friends and we would just all hang out like we were watching old YouTube videos, just keeping just keeping everyone in great vibes. And it was just a great week of disc golf all together. Indeed, it was. And it was a lot of fun to watch. Though I'm sure it was quite stressful for you to play out. But again, congratulations for your win, A.B.